activists? Is it a new 21st century phenomenon? And more importantly, why is it that you never see activists, particularly climate change activists, in the very depths of winter? Hi, good morning, Neil Sean here in the heart of London. I hope you're keeping well today. And here is your breaking news story coming out of London. As you can see next to me, there's a wonderful statue here in Westminster of a lady that really truly did so much. We're just talking about activism and things. This is, of course, way beyond social media and simply gluing yourself to the pavement or trying to descale buildings and cause mayhem and havoc. Yes, they did do certain things. We all know about that infamous uh, situation with the King's Horse. That was an extreme moment. Moment. And I've often believed, looking back at that one, that wasn't necessarily as planned as they made out later in the history books. But as ever, do let me know what you think about that. But we're talking about 21st century activists, and we've seen a rise and rise of these people. You know the ones I mean, insulate. Insulate Britain, insulate around the world, and of course Extinction Rebellion, which are very extreme money-making corporations. Whichever you think, whatever you believe, just take a look at their website. There's serious money there, particularly when you look at the merchandise and the markup that they're making. Now, their argument is this, of course, that they need to make this money in order to fend off the people that are trying to get them arrested, put them in prison, or indeed sort out their solicitor fines. Hmm. <laughs> but when you look at the actual bank accounts, it's phenomenal, the money that's accruing in there. And as ever with these sort of movements, it's always the chosen few that do incredibly well. Now we do have the likes, as we know worldwide, of the people like Greta Thunberg who started this movement, or so she thinks, but it's been going on for decades really, you know, lots of people knew about climate change, it's nothing new, but then again some might say that she's been exploited herself to make lots of money. But here's the particular information that I managed to find out directly from some of the people from Insulate Britain and Extinction Rebellion, and here it is. It's interesting to note because, as I said at the beginning of this video, you never really truly see anybody out and about, do you? You know, when it's uh, really cold, wet, rainy, measurable, dark. Now, they always decide to do their Ashtang Yoga in the middle of Lambeth Bridge, say, in the height of summer when they can disrupt people who are going to work, who are trying to make a living, keep, of course, head above water, that sort of thing. These particular activists, and I found this out myself, speaking directly to quite a few of them, Quite a lot are elderly, bored, lonely, so they soon glue themselves to the road for attention rather than sit alone with a lot of money. Many of them are incredibly well off. But the point is this, they told me this, oh no, you won't see us out over winter, it's way too cold. You know, we don't want to really um, highlight the plight in those dark months, we have to be visibly seen. Ah, oh, right. So you can only do this, of course, for the snowflakes when it's easier on temperature. Nothing to do, of course, with saving the planet, but they can galvanise more people to come out, do their collections in the heart of all these big cities around the world, and more importantly, make money. So next time that you do truly think about joining some of these groups, and some of them are indeed very worthy, they highlight certain causes. But pick and choose your causes very carefully because from my investigations, what I'm seeing here is people becoming incredibly wealthy at the top and at the bottom as ever, shelling out and more importantly, sometimes getting a criminal record. And for that, making somebody rich, is it truly worth it? Neil Sean in the very heart of London.